Hello and welcome to Coming Soon with Marketing Mark. You review the movies, but I review its merchandise. Now you're probably looking at the title and thinking, do you think it's unsafe for movie studios to be promoting their movies with fast food companies? You see many people complain that by promoting their movies with fast food companies, movie studios are contributing to the obesity epidemic in America because it makes kids want to go to that restaurant so they can get that new toy from that new movie they want to watch. In fact, someone actually tried to ban Happy Meals in California. Now what do I think of this? I think we should blame the parents rather than the companies. Sure, movie studios might be instigating this because the kids want to keep going to the restaurant so they can get all the toys, but I think parents should be able to say no, that they've had enough fast food and they don't need every single toy. Sure, if you do this, kids will get angry at you, but I'm sure they'll forgive you after a while. Speaking of this, if there's one company that refuses to do fast food promotions because of this, it's Disney. However, I think they're being hypocritical for doing this because they still tie in their movies with other unhealthy products. Let's look at Cars 2, for example. It had a Juicy Juice tie-in. And let's look at what companies they used to promote the Avengers. Dr. Pepper, Reese's, and Red Baron Pizza. Not to mention all the crap they probably sell at Disney World or Disneyland. Seriously, why is it that it's okay to tie in your movies with those products, but fast food is too unhealthy to tie in your movie? Don't you just find that a little hypocritical on their part? <sighs> Sorry, I had to get that out of the way. If you're wondering why Liam didn't talk about this in his Disney merchandise video, well, he would have talked about it, but we didn't actually think about that until after those videos were finished. Now that we've talked about the controversy around fast food tie-ins, let's look at the movies f some fast food restaurants pick. Is it me or does Subway have a terrible taste in movies? I mean, they promoted the animated Keenan Eye, Land of the Lost, Clash of the Titans, Green Lantern, and Battleship, all of which were not only critical flops, but most of them, except for Clash of the Titans, were financial flops as well. I mean, I know that every fast food restaurant has promoted terrible movies before, but Subway has hardly ever promoted any good movies. It's like these studios are so embarrassed by these movies that they have them promoted at Subway because... They know that nobody knows they actually do tie-ins. Now that we've talked about that, let's talk about the fast food commercials themselves. Now I've noticed some patterns across fast food commercials. One of these patterns is, well, some of them are just not that funny. Take a bow wow, guys. Here he is on the big screen. And here he is on the big plate. He wants the new Tuscan chicken melt. Tuscan chicken melt. Nice to see you again. Sensational. This isn't funny! Though some of them are. Action! <laughs> Another common theme for fast food commercials is that I notice they tend to repeat the same plots. For example, there are a lot of commercials where we see characters from the movie they're trying to promote go to the fast food place so they can get food there. Not only that, but there are also a lot of commercials where a character from that movie or TV show actually tries to steal food from that fast food place. Another common premise for fast food commercials is a crazy person who thinks they're a superhero as Burger King had two commercials back in 2007 promoting Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, and Spider-Man 3 which had the exact same premise. A crazy person thinks they're either the Invisible Woman or they think they're Spider-Man. Both commercials even had the same actress. Another time they had the same premise is, when they promoted Hook and Muppet Treasure Island, they had the exact same plot. A little kid actually likes taking baths so he can play with his McDonald's bath toys. Because get it? Kids don't usually like to take baths. Ha ha! Now I know it's hard to come up with new ideas, but couldn't you at least try? Seriously, talk about repeating yourself. Seriously, talk about repeating yourself. Another problem fast food commercials used to have is, well, sometimes they tend to repeat the same music. For example, back in the 80s when they had a commercial promoting a movie back in Christmas time, they kept using the same sugary, sentimental music that gives you diabetes just by listening to it. Gus, Jack. What's up, Cinderella? Surprise. That's me. Imagine a world beneath the sea. Come on, mates. I've got a surprise for you. What's the surprise? Seriously, talk about cheap. Now, this isn't the only stupid thing I find about these commercials. 
I find a lot of fast food commercials to be stupid, or not really stupid, but kind of interesting. And we're here to talk about them. But the way I'm going to do this is the way the nostalgia critic usually looks at commercials. In other words, I'm going to look at the commercials one by one and comment on them. The reason I'm doing this is because, well, if I want to talk about a lot of fast food commercials I want to talk about, I don't think the way I usually look at merchandise would really work. Now, let's look at McDonald's commercials first. Oh, just a note, I'm not going to look at every single fast food commercial I find to be interesting, just ones that aren't from certain franchises or companies I want to talk about in the future. Well, for a whole episodes at least. Anyway, let's get started. So the first movie to start this trend, at least in McDonald's, was Star Trek The Motion Picture. But actually, Star Wars started it when they promoted it at Burger King. Irony. But let's look at the commercial. For the commercial, they have a clean on saying why you should go to McDonald's, and they also have a translator translating what he's saying. For you parents who don't speak Klingonese, he's saying people of Earth unite and bring your kids to McDonald's for a Star Trek meal. Now I have to wonder why they did that unless... Oh my god. Is there some evil plan behind this? Oh my god. I have to stop this. But only after I watch more commercials. Imagine a world. Now, like Liam said back in his Disney merchandise video, Disney used to advertise their products with McDonald's, and one of the movies they promoted was A Little Mermaid during its theatrical run. Now, for the commercial, just watch. With an enchanted McDonald's of pure fantasy, where the little mermaid's friend Sebastian floundered a fish. Yes, apparently there's a McDonald's at the bottom of the ocean. Seriously, McDonald's, stop building restaurants everywhere! And get a free plush ornament, either flounder That's me! Or no, duh! So come to McDonald's, hurry along, like a true fantasy. It's here then, score! Your holiday place, McDonald's! <laughs> I like how that edit implies a model flounder after him when he was sad. These people are very sensitive, aren't they? Now back when Disney was promoting their movies with McDonald's again before, well, you know, one of the movies they promoted was Tarzan. Anyway, what I find weird about this commercial is the way the announcer pronounces Tarzan. At first, he pronounces it wrongly. Now at McDonald's, there are eight Tarzan characters. But then he pronounces it the right way. Tarzan is the epic new film from Disney. Why not just pronounce it the right way both times? But if you think that's stupid, look at this. <laughs> That's right, they had a kid dub over himself roaring. They really couldn't just have him roar in the first take. They just had to film him pretending he was roaring and then have him dub over that scene. Why couldn't they just have him roar the first time? What's sad is that it looks creepy. I mean, as you all know, I just hate it when they... <sighs> have those scenes where, you know, in movie trailers they have scenes where they redub something where characters obviously weren't talking like that, but this is even worse. And you know what? You know what's sad? The fact that fast food commercials are prone to this. There it is! In that rock! Stand back. But you know why it's sad? Because at least there they're taking scenes from something where the characters have no control over how they speak. This makes no sense. <laughs> of Disney's epic new film, Hercules. Like the last Disney commercial, this was another tie-in from Britain, this one promoting Hercules. Now this commercial suffers from a cliché that I just despise. What cliché is that? There wasn't any time to think of in and out like that. It was over in an instant. I don't want any thanks, I just... I just want to be left alone. Yes, McDonald's turned him into a vegetable. In other words, it caused something bad to happen in his life. <sighs> I just hate commercials where the product they're apparently trying to sell ruins a person's life. I mean, I know it happens in ways that would never happen in real life, and no one actually believes that would happen to them, but still, why would you portray your product negatively? What's sad is that the whole marketing campaign for this movie was about how McDonald's ruined people's lives. For example, in one commercial, a man talked about how he regrets telling a man directions to McDonald's because he wanted to go there. I saw people just walking by and, and looking the other way. 
You know, so I thought I can't sort of stand by and let that happen. I mean, I had to warn him. Before it was too late, you know? Thank you. No worries. Seriously, why would you portray your own restaurant this way? What's even sadder is that Burger King has done this too. Be prepared to live with your choice. Whoa, alien box. That's about how much it's gonna take for me to fix this mess. This counts as your break, you know that, right? Now let's leave the mother country and go to a Disney tie-in commercial from Japan, which was promoting three Pixar movies for some reason. Anyway, I love the acting of these two kids. <laughs> Seriously, it's like they're in a mugging contest. I cannot mug you. No, I cannot mug you. What can I say but... Best mugging contest ever. Now let's look at a Disney movie that was CGI yet not from Pixar, The Wild. In this commercial, two kids are playing with their Happy Meal toys, then one of them imagines they are riding a rhino to McDonald's, and ironically, a little girl is actually riding a giraffe. Now I know it's supposed to be ironic, but I have to wonder, where did she get that giraffe from? And where are her parents? Seriously, it's kind of sad the commercial ends like this because it's really getting my attention. Also, is it me or does that lion look weird standing upright? I mean, I don't mind when cartoon animals stand upright, but when they're built like animals, it looks creepy and wrong. Now let's talk about a live-action Disney movie that was promoted at McDonald's. You see, Disney distributed Muppet Treasure Island, which, like I said before, was promoted at McDonald's. Now the fact that they are reusing premises isn't the only interesting thing about this commercial. It also has this unintentionally funny line. Kermit squirts! <laughs> you have to wonder what they were thinking when they wrote that. Okay, we have to find a way to say Kermit squirts water out of his mouth that isn't a sexual innuendo. Like what? Um, I don't know. Um, um, fuck it. Let's just say Kermit squirts. In Another live-action Disney movie that was promoted at McDonald's was a remake of 101 Dalmatians. Now this is a pretty average commercial as it's just about how mischievous these puppies are and how you can get toy versions of them at McDonald's. So why do I mention it? Well, in the commercial there are three kids counting the dogs and look at the kid in the middle. One, two, three. Um, hi kid from Home Alone 3. What's funny is that he also did a Hunchback of Notre Dame commercial for McDonald's. Alex, time to come down. I do not wish to leave this bell tower, but Quasimodo and I are having way too much fun with the gargoyles and the birds. Weird where you find that actors got their start from, even if it is just that guy actors. You now let's stop looking at movies that were produced under the Disney label that were promoted at McDonald's and instead look at movies that were made by Disney under one of their other labels. One of these movies was Dick Tracy. Now. I don't get what they're going for for this commercial. You see, this commercial is stereotypically urban. The actors talk like they're in a BET sitcom. You want a thousand dollars? How? I helped Dick Tracy catch a thief. And the McDonald's theme has a gospel version at the end. All I have to ask is, why? Why make this commercial urban and hip? I mean, the other movies they promoted didn't have commercials or were trying to pull in an urban audience, so why this one? Seriously, it's pretty pointless. They could have just treated it like a normal commercial that just so happened to have black people in it. What's even odder is that they have had normal commercials that had black people in it that weren't acting ghetto. How about some puzzles? Puzzles, huh? Maybe I'll have a bite. Some CDs? A lizard. A lizard? Or some clothes. Or maybe the earrings. Uh -huh. So why make this one urban and hip? Now, for those who don't know, Armageddon, yes, the Michael Bay film, was distributed by Disney under the Touchstone banner, and as a result, it was promoted by McDonald's. Now, because of this, I have to say the McDonald's advertising for this film was horrible. Why? Because they made natural disasters look like a good thing. Don't believe me? Well, in one of the commercials, a comet is about to hit the Earth, and guess how everybody reacts? This summer, don't chill at a block party. That's right, it excites them. Also, in the second commercial McDonald's made for Armageddon, they, well, said this. 